in this lecture, we'll be looking at the urogenital triangle. This can also be referred to as the anterior perineal triangle. If you look at this image by the side here, this is the perineal region. And I have put up a lecture on the perineum. If you've not checked that lecture up, please kindly go and do so. This is the inferior view of the pelvic cavity. And it is in this specific region that we have the perineum. And also placing this image in anatomical position, this is where we have the anterior view at the front. And behind here is where we have the posterior view. This perineum is a diamond-shaped configuration that is demarcated here in this image. So this is the diamond-shaped configuration of the perineum. And this diamond-shaped configuration is further subdivided into two triangles. So we have one triangle at the front and we have another one behind. And these triangles are created by the imaginary line that runs from one ischia tuberosity on the right to the other ischia tuberosity on the left. So if you look at this line here, demarcated in dotted pink, is what is used to subdivide the entire perineum into the two triangles that it is made up of. So we have one triangle at the front here, which is referred to as the urogenital triangle. And behind, we have another triangle that is referred to as the anal triangle. For the purpose of this class, we would be focusing on the urogenital triangle. We would be establishing the different structures that are seen to form the alignment of this triangular configuration and also the structures that are embedded within the space. So we say that the urogenital triangle can also be referred to as the anterior perineal triangle. This anterior perineal triangle is what is seen to be highlighted here in yellow. We already described in our previous slide that the entire perineum takes a diamond-shaped configuration and, of course, a line running from one ischia tuberosity on the right to the other ischia tuberosity on the left is used to further subdivide this diamond-shaped configuration into two triangles. And this is where we have the urogenital triangle at the front here that is highlighted here in yellow, while behind we have the anal triangle. We are focusing on the urogenital triangle. So this is the region that is marked here in yellow. The urogenital triangle is so named because within this space, we have the urinary structure and also the genital organs located within this region. And that is why it is so named the urogenital triangle, which literally means that the triangle into which urinary and also the genital structures are embedded within. So as we go through with this lecture, we'll be highlighting the specific structures that are located within the space. Just for us to know that the name urogenital triangle is so carved based on the structures that are located within that region, which of course include the urinary structures and also the genital organs. And that is why it is so named the urogenital triangle. Going back to our subdivision of the entire perineal space into two triangles, we say we have one triangle at the front, which is referred to as the urogenital triangle. And we have another one behind, which is referred to as the anal triangle. If you try to compare these two triangles, you see that the urogenital triangle is more complex. And this complexity is created as a result of the structures that are located within the urogenital triangle. Within the urogenital triangle, we have the urogenital diaphragm. So if you use this image down here by the side, this is where we have the pelvic cavity. We say that the pelvic cavity is inferiorly limited by the pelvic diaphragm. And this is what is highlighted here in purple. We already described this in our previous lecture on the pelvic diaphragm. This can also be referred to as the pelvic floor. These are collection of muscles that are seen to form the inferior limit of the pelvic cavity. And this is what is highlighted here in this image. And we know that inferior to the pelvic floor or the pelvic diaphragm is where we have the perineum. So the space that is created inferior to the pelvic floor is where we have the perineum. And this region inferiorly here is, is where the perineum is and this perineum is further subdivided into two triangles. And this is the line of demarcation here at this point. We already established that this line of demarcation is an imaginary line that runs from one ischia tuberosity to the other. And around this space, we have the urogenital triangle at the front, while behind we have the anna triangle. Within the urogenital triangle is where we have the urogenital diaphragm. And this is what is elected here in green. You can see that. We have another diaphragm created within the urogenital triangle, 
And this diaphragm is so named the urogenital diaphragm. This urogenital diaphragm is limited to just the urogenital triangle. It is not seen to extend to the anal triangle. And this is one of the bases behind the complexity of the urogenital triangle. Also within this urogenital triangle, we have the perineal membrane. If you go back to this image here, this structure that is highlighted in green is what we refer to as the urogenital diaphragm. This urogenital diaphragm is superiorly bounded by the superior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm. And this is what is seen to be highlighted here in yellow. And it's also inferiorly bounded by the inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm. And this is what is highlighted here in red. This inferior fascia is what is specifically referred to as a perineal membrane. This is what is seen to be carried here in black. This perineal membrane is the basis onto which the urogenital triangle is further subdivided into pouches. So if you go back to this image here, this is where we have the deep perineal pouch. This deep perineal pouch will then be seen to be located between the superior and the inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm. Remember that the urogenital diaphragm is what is seen to be highlighted here in green. So the fascia covering it above and below is what is seen to mark the superior and the inferior limit of the deep perineal pouch. This deep perineal pouch can literally mean the urogenital diaphragm. Because if you look at this space that is carved out as deep perineal pouch, the structure that is located within this region is the urogenital diaphragm. And this is where it gets a bit trickish, but of course, interesting. So if you go more inferiorly, be between the perineal membrane, which is the inferior lining or fascia of the urogenital diaphragm, and also the coast fascia, we have the superficial perineal pouch. This superficial perineal pouch is what is seen to be carved out here in black, and you see it located, of course, at the superficial region. This superficial perineal pouch is seen as a true pouch because if you look at its configuration, you see that it has the features that represent a true pouch. So you have it extending superiorly from the perineal membrane. We already know that the perineal membrane is the inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm. And you see it extending down to where we have the coarse fascia. The coarse fascia is the deepest layer of the superficial fascia around the perineal region. So you see that we have the creation of pouches. We also have the presence of the perineal membrane, which of course is the basis onto which these pouches are created. Then finally, we have the urogenital diaphragm. So we have a number of structures located within the urogenital triangle. And this is what creates the complexity around this region. When you compare it with the posterior anal triangle, and it's good for us to be able to highlight this. So let's drive through the boundaries of the urogenital triangle. We already know that this triangle is a triangular space that is located in the anterior part of the perineum. If you look at this image by the side, we already have the configuration of the perineum created around the inferior view of the pelvic cavity. And at this point, which is an imaginary line running from one ischia tuberosity to the other, you have this diamond-shaped configuration of the perineum, further subdivided into the anterior triangle at the front, and the posterior triangle below. The anterior triangle at the front is the urogenital triangle, while the one created behind is the anal triangle. And because it's the triangular space, it would be having an apex. So the apex of the urogenital triangle is formed by the pubic symphysis. And this is what is saying to be carried here in blue. We know that the pubic symphysis is a joint that is created in the anterior part of the pelvic cavity. And this is what is saying to form the apex of the urogenital triangle. We also have the base because remember we say the triangular space, it will be having an apex and definitely will be having a base. So this is the base here, here, here in purple. And this base is created by the imaginary line that runs from one ischia tuberosity to the other. So we have one ischia tuberosity around this space and we have another one on the other side. So it like joining these two ischia tuberosity, we align with the base of the urogenital triangle. Then finally, we have the lateral borders. We would be having two lateral borders. We have one on the right, and we have another one on the left. So these two lateral borders is formed by the ischiopubic ramus. We have the ischiopubic ramus on the right, 
And we have another ischiopubi cremos on the left. And these two rami will be seen to form the lateral borders of the triangular space that is referred to as urogenital triangle. So you can see that we now have a complete triangular orientation. Of course, different structures will be forming different regions of this triangular space. And this is what we have highlighted using this slide. So let's drive further by looking at the contents of the urogenital triangle. The urogenital triangle, as we stated, is the anterior triangular space that is already at this point. So this urogenital triangle is seen to contain a number of structures. Looking deep through the name, because it's urogenital, it means it will be containing the urinary structures and also the genital structures. So you see it's containing urinary structure and also the genital structure. The urinary structure that you see around this space is the opening of the urethra. And this is what is highlighted here in red. You also have external genitalia also located around this space. For the male, it is different from the female. In the male, the penis is what is seen to be highlighted here. So you have the root of the penis emerging around the urogenital triangle. We also have the scrotum also finding its space around this region. In the female, we have the opening of the vagina canal, and this is what is seen to be highlighted here in red. You see that in both the male and the female, we have different structures located within the erogenital triangle. And this is because of the peculiarity of the reproductive system in both the male and also in female. So we've tried to highlight different structures from the urinary structures and also the genital structures that are located within the erogenital triangle. So for the urethra, we have this in both sexes. In both the male and the female, you have the urethra located within the urogenital triangle. It's also good for us to add that the urogenital triangle is further subdivided into pouches. And this subdivision is created by the perineal membrane. We've tried to touch on this in our previous slide when we started this lecture, where we tried to describe the complexity of the urogenital triangle. Remember, we establish that the urogenital triangle is further subdivided into the deep perineal pouch, which is located above, and the superficial perineal pouch, which is located below. We say that the perineal membrane is the basis onto which this subdivision is done. So if you try to use this image by the side here, this is where we have the pelvic cavity. So that the pelvic cavity is inferiorly limited by the pelvic floor or the pelvic diaphragm. And inferior to this space is where we have the perineum. I've tried to put up a lecture on the perineum. If not check that lecture, or please kindly go and do so. So if you have the perineum located at the inferior part of the pelvic floor, this perineum is further subdivided into two. And this subdivision is created along an imaginary line that is seen to cross from one ischia tuberosity to the other. So at this mark here, you have the anteriorly created urogenital triangle and the posteriorly created anal triangle. Within the urogenital triangle, we say we have the urogenital diaphragm. It's just a corresponding named diaphragm. And this is what is seen to be elected here in green. So this urogenital diaphragm, if you look at it and try to compare it with the pelvic floor or the pelvic diaphragm that is elected here in purple, you see that the pelvic floor, the pelvic diaphragm is seen to cross across the entire pelvic cavity. So you see it has a complete demarcation created at this point. But for the urogenital diaphragm that is highlighted here in green, you see that it creates an incomplete limit of partitioning around this space. And if you look at it, you see that it is not seen to extend into the anal triangle. It is limited within the urogenital triangle. And this is why it is so referred to as the urogenital diaphragm which means the diaphragm of the urogenital space. So you see it elected here in green, and this urogenital diaphragm is further padded by a superior fascia and also an inferior fascia. So we have the superior fascia here elected in yellow, and this is referred to as the superior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm, and inferiorly it is also covered by an inferior fascia, which is referred to as the inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm. This inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm is what is specifically referred to as the perineal membrane. So it has a distinct name given to it, and this is referred to as the perineal membrane, and this is what is seen to be carried here in black. This perineal membrane is the basis onto which the urogenital triangle is further subdivided into the deep perineal pouch 
and also the superficial perineal pouch. So if you look at this region here that is demarcated in black, is where we have the deep perineal pouch. We say that the deep perineal pouch is the space that is created between the superior and the inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm. And this is what is seen here in this image. We also say that the deep perineal pouch is not a true pouch because if you look at its configuration, it literally translates to the space where the urogenital diaphragm is embedded within. And this is where we say it gets trickish. But if you look at the configuration of the deep perineal pouch, you see that it does not present the future of a true pouch. The deep perineal pouch can also be represented with as the urogenital diaphragm. Because in this space, the structure that is contained within this region is the urogenital diaphragm. Then if you go more inferiorly, you have another superficial space that is created between the perineal membrane, which is the inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm and the cold fascia. And this is the region here that is also carved out in black. And this region is referred to as the superficial perineal pouch. And this is located at the superficial region. So below you have the superficial perineal pouch, while above you have the deep perineal pouch. If you look at the configuration of the superficial perineal pouch, you see that it has the feature of a true pouch this is what a true pouch represents. So you now see that these pouches are created within the urogenital triangle. And this creation is as a result of the inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm, which is referred to as a perineal membrane. So it is this perineal membrane that subdivides the triangular space in the anterior region of the perineum, which is referred to as the urogenital triangle, into the deep perineal pouch and also the superficial perineal pouch. You can see how interesting this is. And I hope that going through this lecture slide, you will be able to understand the basis behind the formation of these pouches. And this is where it gets a bit difficult for students to understand. Thanks for watching this video. Let's continue to stay glued to this channel.